In this video, we're going to look a little more into hybridization when we have lone pairs present on the central atom. So if we look at methane, CH4, it has a bond angle between any pair of hydrogens of 109.5 degrees, and that's the bond angle you get when you have a perfect tetrahedron. And if we look at ammonia, there is one lone pair and three hydrogens, so the bond angle between any pair of hydrogens there gets smaller, becomes 107.8 degrees, and water, with its two lone pairs and two hydrogens, gets even smaller at 104.5. So our sp3 hybrid orbitals that we had for uh, methane, those form the nice natural 109.5 tetrahedral bonding angle, but in the case of water, if we use sp3 hybrid orbitals, we would not get uh, perfect alignment with our with our vector towards uh, the hydrogen atom from the oxygen because these are 104.5 so they'd be pointing you know a little bit further out we wouldn't get the ideal kind of overlap with a bond with a orbital that's pointing straight towards the atom that we want to bond with so the question in this video is what uh, value of hybridization or what kind of hybridization what type of orbital coefficients do we need to generate orbitals that uh, align in this way and what can we learn from that so it turns out that the actual two orbitals that form this 104.5 degree angle that we have here if you actually solve for it you get two orbitals we would have psi 1 equals 0 0.45 s meaning the 2s on the oxygen atom plus 0 0.71 px where i've defined the x uh, dimension to be uh, along this axis here and plus 0 0.55 pz where the z-axis is bisecting the hoh bond angle and then the water molecule is in the XZ plane. Okay, and Psi2 is almost the same thing, except for one small change. There's going to be a flip of sign here. That's minus 0 0.71 PX plus 0 0.55 PZ. Okay, and as you can see from this orbital here, if you uh, tried to compute the overlap integral between these things integral of psi i times psi j over all of space that would again form an orthonormal set as we want hybrid orbitals to do so how much of this is s and how much of it is p well what we have to do is calculate the s and the p character from the orbital coefficients so as I have been saying on previous videos, it's to take the coefficient and square it. That's the fraction of it. That's s. Take the coefficient of px, pz, py, square those, and then sum them up. And it was a lot easier when I already had it, you know, in, in terms of the nice square root and everything already sitting there. So in this case, we actually have to do the math and see what it comes out to be. So that's 0 0.45 squared equals 0 0.20 to two sig figs, because I only gave this to two sig figs as well, equals 20% S character. And for the P, we have plus or minus 0 0.71 squared plus 0 0.55 squared equals if you do that math it comes out to be 0 0.8 equals 80 percent p character okay so if we notice from an sp3 orbital that was 25 percent s and 75 percent p uh, an sp2 was 20 an sp2 was 33 percent s 67 percent p so this, as our bond angle is getting even smaller, is becoming an even higher fraction of P character. And in fact, it approaches 100% P character as the bond angle approaches 90 degrees. And we wouldn't need any hybridization at all. Those would just be the, the lone P orbitals themselves. 
Okay, so using this type of construct, then we can define something calling the SPN character. So SPN, we have some SPN orbital where we can now generalize this to where n doesn't necessarily have to be an integer, where we can say n is the percent p divided by percent s. So for example, in water, H2O, n equals 80% p, 0 0.80 over 0 0.20 equals 4.0. So that means that for water, we have an SP 4.0 or an SP4 orbital. So that is very P-like, much more like a P orbital than even the SP3 of methane. Okay, and where is this N gonna come from in general? Let's say, let's say we don't wanna calculate what these coefficients are in terms of the angle, but we just want to give in a certain angle uh, between two uh, chemical bonds there that we want to find out what this N is just given that angle between them. So it turns out if you work through all the math and do quite a messy derivation, what you can eventually get to is the following equation, is that if you take uh, the angle between them and call that theta, that what you'll have is N is equal to the inverse sine, so one over sine, or the cosecant of theta minus 90 degrees. So if we use this type of formula and we use these bond angles that we've been given here, what do we find? We find that much as we expect to happen, H2O is SP 4.0, we have NH3 is SP 3.3. .3. We have CH4 is SP 3.0, just as we would expect it to be a perfect SP3. And that's the continuum as we go from having two lone pairs to one lone pair to zero lone pairs. So putting in a lone pair makes you more P-like and less S-like because those lone pairs are repelling each other much more, forcing these two bonding orbitals to get much closer together, forcing them to become uh, more P-like and less S-like.